I just think right now women, especially in business, this is the year of women. I just know that. Life begins at 150 grand a year, life gets better at 250, and life gets real good at 500. Nobody can tell me differently on it. When you start teaching something, I feel like that's when you start to master the actual art of it. You and I, when we publish a book, we can go toe to toe with any of the New York trade publishers, any of the big time authors. And we get to compete in that marketplace and then let the market decide whether our stuff is good. People forget sometimes as an entrepreneur, the whole damn point of entrepreneurship is to make money. And now here is The Win with your hostess, serial entrepreneur, marketeer, and chief sexy boss, Heather Havenwood. Have you ever wanted to stop the nine to five grind and start your own company? Do you want to have more control of your income and your time? Then now is that moment to start and grow a successful business. As a female entrepreneur, I have succeeded. I have bit the dust. I have bounced back to growth and prosperity. But this would not have been possible without first taking the leap and owning my own business. But I didn't do it alone. I hired my first business coach 13 years ago. And now I help small businesses, solo practitioners, and professionals double their income and triple their time off. So let me help you too. My gift to you today is a free one-on-one strategy session. So go to coachwithheather.com, coachwithheather.com, and let me help you double your income and triple your time off. Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Win with Heather Havenwood. What I focus on is entrepreneurship mindset. And look, Part of the entrepreneur mindset is understanding other entrepreneurs and what they've been through in life, right? So my job is to bring you people that are out there actually doing the real thing, what I call getting hit in the NFL, right? You got to get hit. So today I have on the line, Joe Kashbura. I'm probably totally messing that up, right? What's that last name? Kashurba. Yeah. Yeah. No I can't problem. even like repronounce that for you. <laughs> so spell that for us. Everyone knows who you are. What's your last name spelled? It's K-A-S-H-U-R-B-A. So what is that? What's the origin? It's Ukrainian. Actually. Ukrainian. Yeah, I would never guess that. I would have never, <laughs> never guessed that. Okay, so Joe, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about Joe. Joe grew up the basically the freelance web design world. I think that's really awesome. Started in high school into a digital agency with a virtual team and clients around the world. He went from building $300 websites to $30,000 websites, which we're going to talk about because I think today's world, it's kind of new. That whole industry is changing and managing a six-figure digital advertising budget for some of the largest manufacturing and construction companies. Joe now advises and mentors other freelance web designers and digital agencies, owners on how to develop and scale their business. So welcome, Joe. Hey, thanks for having me, Heather. Yeah, so you know, I have this thing about web designers, you know, because I've been in the industry, industry since 2001. I had my first online business when I was in 1999, when I was three. Just kidding. You're supposed to laugh, Joe. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have my first business when I was three, when I was 99, but I did have my first business in 99. And back then that was HTML coding. You know what I mean? And nowadays yep. you can do all kinds of things like Wix or WordPress or whatever, whatever. And I remember back in the day, even to this day, I get people calling me and going, oh, you do marketing coaching. So you must be a web designer. I'm like, wow, that's so 2003. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm not a web dude. You know, so I think it's interesting that the business has changed. So tell us, since you've been doing this for a while, you said in high school, how long ago was that? It was uh, about 11 or 12 years ago now. I started when I was 15 in high school and I'm uh, now 27. Okay, great. All right. So um, how did you get started? Did you start doing HTML coding? What what happened there? Yeah. So the, what, what really happened was I had a group of friends who had a band in high school. And Perfect. the first... The first entrepreneurial thing I ever did was I filmed them playing at a local restaurant uh -huh. and I sold videotapes <laughs> of them playing to their parents. Was it the VHS tapes? Y yes. V oh my God. VHS tapes. Exactly. That is awesome. Remember the tapes? You have to do like mixing tapes. Remember? Did you ever do that? Mix, did you ever do mix tapes back in the day? Yep. I, yep. I never did. My brother was big into that and... Uh, you know, it was always trying to come up with a tape that mixed all these songs together. And, yeah. And, would seem and the like cameras were so big, right? Those huge cameras to do the VHS because you had a big old VHS inside. Is that what you used? 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, you know, you're trying to edit it and you have to like record it in real time onto the computer and oh stuff. It was God. terrible. Wow. We've come a long way. What year was that? 2003? 2004. So that was 2004, three or four probably till that I was doing that, that video. So by the uh, way, videos. millennials, if you guys are listening, which you're probably a millennial, this is before SD cards, just so you know. <laughs> this is before SD cards. So, okay. So here you are, you're filming your buddies. You're selling these VH steps to the parents, which is just brilliant. Then what? What happened? Well, what happened was I said, well, I kind of had this interest in the in the video production kind of thing. Right. And so I had this idea to do a video production business. Oh, okay. How'd that go? This is pre-YouTube people, by the way. Yes. Yeah. It didn't go well because I never well. got any video production clients. Of but course. I learned HTML in order to build a website for that video production oh, business. Right. Of course. You're going to build a website for HTML. So by the way, this is HTML code. You guys don't know yes. what that is either, which I had to learn how to do that too. I was doing uh, that in 1998-99, which is creepy weird. Um, I built my first website in 98. So I understand what you're talking about. You do a refresh HTML code and one word up and then. So, okay. So here you are. You're like, I want more clients for my video business and you create a website. And then what happened? How'd you turn it, that into a business? Basically what happened was people s just sort of randomly started asking me for websites because I built a website for that business. Right. You know, the, one of my first clients was the <laughs> photographer that did my senior photos called into the high school looking for somebody to build a website and somehow was referred to me. My mom met somebody on a plane I ended up doing a website for, like just random things like that. So referral marketing 101, parents. Parents, parents that's a good source for <laughs> referral. So were you around during the like, this is, I'm just trying to think 2003. This is still AOL chat days, right? Yes, definitely. I Ain't. knew that. I, I met all these kinds of people with AOL chat. I probably was talking to a murderer. I have no idea. But <laughs> I met all these people that I was going to like run away with or something in AOL chat days. Um, this is during the modem days, right? Yes. I was doing these websites on mm -hmm. half dial up because my parents lived out far enough in the middle of nowhere that the phone lines were split. So it was a half dial up. Okay. What's a half dial? Does that mean you only get half the... What does that mean? Yeah, what? Yeah, uh, yeah. It's a good question. I, in rural areas, they would like actually party lines? split off party lines. What was that? Is that like party lines? Not exactly, but yeah, yeah. I guess it's sort of similar. They would uh -huh. split the phone line. It wasn't that you could, uh, you know, hear the other person, but what would, you know, the talking was normal. But what would happen in those rural areas was you, your phone line was split. So once you got on the internet. Instead of being 56 kbps, you mm -hmm. were 28 kbps. Ooh, so ouch. it was half of what normal people experienced as dial-up. Okay, so people listening, they're like, what's that? Let's just consider it really slow. <laughs> That's really, really, really slow. Especially since I just upgraded to Google Fiber, and I'm now like some ridiculous high Google oh, Fiber awesome. speed right now. That's just amazing. So yeah, I, I remember those days, though. I remember those 24k, 56k day yeah. and then just sit there and just yep yeah. oh wow well here you are you started building websites and how did you what have you been doing the last 10 years then take us to today yeah so it was it was something all through high school and college that i did on the side yeah and then at the end of college i was involved in a startup company that, mm -hmm. that like fell apart during <laughs> finals and graduation week okay and kind of, so hold on what kind of company was that it was a website builder company. It was sort of going to be something like uh, Squarespace or Wix or something like that. It was going to be never, it just never got off the ground. And where were you? Were you in, are you in California, Kansas? Where are you? I'm at? in Pittsburgh. Okay. So you're in Pittsburgh. So you went to, did you go to Penn State? I went to University of Pittsburgh. Pitt. U University of Pittsburgh. Okay, great. So that's really interesting. So you're now being part of a startup and the startup just crashes and burns. Yes, it was a major crash and burn. And then, okay. you know, I, that was going to be my big thing after college. It was going to be awesome. And then I, I graduated. And so all my friends, because I was in computer science and information science and everything, yeah. they're getting jobs at Amazon and Oracle and all these places. And I didn't have a job and my startup company had failed. And I moved back in with my parents and I oh, just wow. had freelance web design that I was doing. Nice. So your friends are like, dude, I'm hanging out with Amazon, got this like 6K job, whatever. You know, exactly. that's okay. That's fine. So, so, you know, because what are they doing it today? That's my question. Are they, are they better off than you now? That, yeah, they're still at that same they're job. They're still at the and, same uh, job. Yeah, exactly. They're not going anywhere. 
You know, and <laughs> look, nothing against having a company job. Like we all get it. We've been there. But it does do something to you that makes you kind of not leave for a while. All right. It yep. just has this kind of on, like, dun, 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 like a little trot, if I call it, that you don't want to get off the horse because there's like a fear. And the other yes. thing that it does is it kind of, I'm going to use the word, crushes one's creativity and one's ability to execute at a fast pace because you have to go through so many layers and, and team meetings and all these things. And with an entrepreneur, it's like, I want to do this. And you're like, go. You know what I mean? So there yeah. isn't any of that structure you have to go through. But at the same time, it gives you the ability to to be more creative. Do you find that? Do you find that you're, it's a little more challenging sometimes to talk to your old high school friends? Like they're, they're not challenged as much? Am I, or am I putting words in your mouth? You can no, absolutely. I okay. do. I do think that there's a there's a big difference between the being an entrepreneur and not. And sometimes you sort of are coming from a different place when you're talking to somebody from that other world. Yeah. And yeah, absolutely. Interesting. Because you're a millennial, right? 27. Yep. Ah, oh, those millennials. You guys are interesting. <laughs> you guys are interesting. I've had definitely a lot of conversations about millennials. What's so different with you guys? I mean, really, what's What's the dealio? Can, do you, one, do you consider yourself like a millennial, you know, in that world? And do you uh, do you relate to a lot of the complaints that people talk about the millennials? I don't think so. I probably would say that a lot of millennials are whiny and stuff. I, okay, I don't think <laughs> so I identify with millennials you very don't. much at all. And why do you think that is? I mean, you're it's I mean, it's your gener- it's your peeps. You know what I mean? What? Why is that? You think they're like that? I just think a, I. Hmm. Here's my big philosophical answer, I guess. I would say go for it. Be the boss of your life. You're listening to The Win with Heather Havenwood. Are you a business owner that has a website but not tech savvy? Do you feel like a hostage to your web guy? The better question is, do you have a money funnel so people come to your page and give you money while you sleep? No? Then go watch free video at heathermakesyoumoney.com. Imagine having a money site, not a website, for your self-published book, e-commerce products, local practitioners like chiropractors or lawyers. Get a money site, not a website. Go watch free video at heathermakesyoumoney.com. Be the boss of your life. You're listening to The Win with Heather Havenwood. I think that we have this sort of changing world where mm-hmm. there's so much capacity to have have your own businesses and your own endeavors on the internet and so much is changing with technology and all of this. I think there's millennials didn't see that coming or probably many of them still don't see it coming. Mm-hmm. And they thought that they could just sort of go through life and get sort of any college degree that they wanted and they would get their perfect job and everything would be great and all this. Mm -hmm. And I think for a lot of them, it's not turning out that way. And it's because so much is changing in the world and they were expecting it to be the way it used to be or something like that. Interesting. So what I'm hearing you say is like millennials want to keep it copacetic and they don't want a lot of change. Is that what I hear? Yeah, they they don't want change or Uh they're they're expecting that they, if they tick the right boxes and they do the right things, right. that they'll have everything that their parents have. Okay. So, you know, by the way, this is a very interesting philosophical question and feel free. No one is listening. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, this is an interesting question for me because you're 27, you're an entrepreneur. It's rare that I come across you guys. So that's why I'm asking, like digging, digging, digging. Mm-hmm. And, the, and, and, and I've, look, I've met some millennials that are amazing. So, don't don't be getting hate mail. I don't want to be getting hate mail over <laughs> here. But I am interested because it is a different philosophy. And I'm in the uh, generation X. We're the smallest. We're the smallest in population versus okay. the baby boomers. But because they're quote unquote dying off, you know, no pun intended, they really are. They're smaller now, of course, when they were for obvious reasons. Now the highest population or large population is millennials on the planet. So and that's that's a fact, right? So you guys have, are now larger than the baby boomers. Mainly hmm. because the baby boomers created you, but also because a lot of baby boomers are quote unquote dying off for age and whatnot, right? So you guys are the largest here in the United States specifically. So my question is, I don't understand how they got that particular view of like they just check mark that because I'm not far off from you. It's not like I'm 80 years old. You know what I mean? I'm only like 15 years older than you, so that's like not that far. But what was that during your growing up in high school that they feel like you just check mark, check mark, check mark, and then all of a sudden everything's good. Where do you think that comes from? 
Hmm. That's a really a good question. I think it was. You're guessing here. You're not a, I mean, you look, you're not, this is not your expertise, so I'm not going to hold you to this. Okay. (laughs) Right. But I'm just asking what you think. And if you don't know, that's fine. Just, we can move on. But I I think it's an interesting question. Like what's the difference between your generation and mine? Because I grew up, look, I graduated high school in 93. Imagine where technology was in 93. Cell phones were around, but no one had them. Right. There was a thing called a Macintosh. Right. But rarely anybody had them. Now I was, I was lucky. My dad is a lot like me. He's what I call um, an early adopter. You know, like, you know how like an in technology, oh, okay, yeah. there's like early adopter and then you have the bell curve. He was an early adopter. So we had VHS and then what was the other one? Beta. It's a beta. Oh, I, yeah. Vaguely, I know yeah, sort of what that we is. We had that in the 70s. And then we wow, had, okay. before we had CDs, we had the big, round, huge discs one. I forgot. There's, there was a period be- before VHS went to DVDs. There was this period oh. of these big discs. They were huge, like, like records. I know what you mean. Yep. What were those called? Because there was some video games on those. Yep, yep. And my dad like bought one of those, the things that we had. The, I mean, they were huge and they were expensive. Like the, the thing itself, right, to actually play them was like two grand, right? Mm-hmm. Now, we weren't wealthy. My just dad had this thing about being the first. So we had that. And then we had a Macintosh. We did. We had a Macintosh. And I played like Spider on it or something or Centipede or something. But I mean, I had mm-hmm. that when I was eight, right? So you got to get the world. That's like 82, 83, 84, something like that. All right. So I grew up on technology, right? And things were really changing. All the change. Yeah. Talk about change, right? Massive changes. Um, at least you guys grew up with cell phones a little bit. <laughs> beeper. I had a beeper <laughs> when I was in high school. I mean, wow. Okay. Right. Oh. So I'm just curious why so different, you know? I guess obviously there's certain, there's different populations of people, different socioeconomic sure. levels and things, but... I would say that mindset of sort of I can check these boxes and everything I'll have everything my parents have is sort of from maybe being removed from some of the struggles of the past Interesting. being farther removed from generations that were in the depression and farther removed from you know that kind of thing and yeah. and just s- sort of seeing the pe- previous generations you know they got a job and they had a family and everything was fine or they went to college and they had a family and they, like everything was fine and sort of missed some of the hard work or missed some of the struggle or missed that some of those things were goals as opposed to sort of things that are just a given. Yeah, no, I get that. That's cool. So we'll move off from that. But it is an interesting conversation, you know, to why is it this particular millennial world is so millennial? (laughs) Yeah, what I call it. Now, with that said, I have some cousins that are millennials and he gives me crap all the time on <laughs> online and he like fights with my friends and online and he's adorable. Uh, he's actually in Penn State. That's why I asked. Oh, so, okay. he's a great guy. He's a master's degree. I asked, my, I asked him one time online. I'm like, so are you working? He's like, well, I'm in a master's program. Does that count? I'm like, no, <laughs> <laughs> that means you're just kind of hanging out. Uh, but anyway, he's a good guy. So tell us about now you're doing 30,000 websites. What does your business look like today? Yeah. So. Over a number of years, I built that from, you know, just being me. Basically, what happened was I was going, you know, working like crazy just by myself as sort of a freelancer. And I remember having my first $10,000 a month as a freelancer, a little bit after college and everything. And I got to the end of the month and I realized there's no way I could do this every month because I was just working so many hours and just grinding so hard to try to do that. And I realized I had to start building a team. So, now I've added on, I've, I have graphic designers, developers, we have project managers that I hand off projects to and everything like that. So I have a whole virtual team now that I work with on, on projects. Nice. Congratulations. So who's on your team? This is really interesting because a lot of people ask me, well, how do you build a team and who's on your team? So you're still a quote unquote web design company. Is that correct? 50, 50% websites and 50% digital marketing services, like doing Google AdWords for, for companies or yeah. managing their their Facebook advertising or that kind of things. Yeah, interesting. So what's your elixir? Like, what's your special thing that you guys do? Are you more, do you love to do web design or do you like to buy media? What do you like to do? In most cases, we start by building the website and then we upsell on, on upsell digital marketing services. And we, we focus on most of our businesses in the manufacturing and industrial, some little bit of construction, those kind of uh, spaces. Interesting. Now, what's cool about those companies that, now, I'm being really mean. You know, they're probably not on the cutting edge of what's happening in digital marketing. So if their site's a little outdated, they don't get mad, right? <laughs> well, there, there's definitely some truth to that in just their 
a digital marketing strategy that on the internet or yeah. in internet marketing circles might be outdated right. will work really, really well for those businesses. Right. That's certainly true. The other thing is that we just had a lot of sort of, I feel like I relate to those people and they're, and the people in those industries are, they tend to be sort of business owners that want to pay an expert to get the job done right rather than trying to waste their Figure time trying out. to do it. Oh, you know, that that's so smart. I mean, I, I understand that completely. I know a lot of coaches, uh, speakers, they try to do it themselves or try to do it on the cheap. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I agree. Manufacturing, construction. Now, how did you get, why did you choose that niche? It's a very specific niche that you chose. That came out of sort of developed naturally. It, it came from looking at all the clients that I'd worked with and looking at which were, which were the best clients and which were the happiest with what we did and everything and realizing that a lot of them were in that space. And then having identified that, choosing to go after it. Interesting. Yeah. So over like doctors or medical, right? Manufacturing and construction companies. How are they advertising on Facebook? Well, we, we, do, um, we do a lot of AdWords. We probably do more AdWords than we do Facebook. Be the boss of your life. You're listening to The Win with Heather Havenwood. Have you ever wanted to stop the nine to five grind and start your own business? Then now is the time to start and grow a business. Hi, I'm Heather Havenwood. And as a female entrepreneur and business coach, I can help you double your income and triple your time off. My gift to you today is a free one-on-one -on -one strategy session with me personally. Go to coachwithheather.com. That's right. Go to coachwithheather.com. Be the boss of your life. You're listening to The Win with Heather Havenwood. We're still doing a ton of Google AdWords. Google. Yeah. That just kills it for some of these industrial companies that want uh, contracts for CNC machining or some sort of chemical process or something like that. that. You know, somebody's looking for proposals and quotes for that and they're searching on Google and AdWords just kills it for that. You know, I just left Vegas a couple of days ago and uh, we were th I was at the Affiliate Summit, which is more lead gen and whatnot for online. But at the same time, there was a, they called the Construction Conference was there. Oh, okay. I don't know if you knew, but that it was like 56,000 people that were there for this construction conference. Did you hear about this? Wow. No, I didn't. Wow. Okay. Um, it was like the world's largest construction and concrete, oh, okay. um, you know, event in the world. And I just came from Affiliate Summit. Affiliate Summit was pretty big. It was 6,000, 7,000 people. It was huge. To me, that's huge. I mean, that's a lot, you know. And then you have um, concrete, it's like 56,000 people. <laughs> yeah. The Uber driver was like, y'all are here for a small one. I'm like, what? 6,000 is a lot of people. Like, oh, well. You know, concrete's 56K, like try to beat that. My That's God. insane. Yeah, yeah, totally, right? That's 56,000 people all coming into Vegas for a construction and concrete seminar to talk about concrete. <laughs> hmm. I don't know how long you talk about concrete. It's kind of boring. But yeah, it's a big business. I mean, it's a big business, obviously, in today's world. And plus, I think with the new administration, we're most likely going to see a rebuild of a lot of different things. So that's exciting. So your business is going to flourish in 2017 with manufacturing construction, you think? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I uh, <laughs> try to not say anything too political, but oh, yeah, sure. I would think uh, I would think so. Yeah, yeah. We're not talking policy or anything. I'm just like he <laughs> has talked about, obviously, to increase, right? So to increase the rebuilding of America. That's one of the things he's been talking about, right? So um, that, of course, includes manufacturing and construction, yeah. right? The, yeah, you no know, problem. Those sure. Stocks have gone up recently. So I think they'll probably will uh, probably concur with that since that's your business. So that's awesome. So what's the future of freelancing? What, can, what advice can you give to other entrepreneurs who are listening and saying, wow, this is pretty cool. He's been doing this for the last 10 years. What kind of advice can you give other people? The biggest thing I see is that I talk to freelancers that are afraid that the web design industry is dying and they're afraid of Squarespace and Wix and all those kind of website builders coming into the market and everything. The thing that people need to understand is that hiring a web designer is no longer the easiest and cheapest way to get a website built. So if you're a web designer trying to sell cheap websites to people who want to get a website up just to sort of get it checked off their list, that's not what to focus on anymore. There used to be a big opportunity there, and there no longer is because of Squarespace and Wix and everything. Now what you have to do is you have to get really focused on who can you really help 
and you know what industry that is or people with a certain situation and focus on solving their problems via web design and via digital marketing as opposed to simply providing those services you know you actually want to go in and solve people's problems and that's where the opportunity is right now okay got it. yeah no that's that's really true i mean i think it used to be that thing called a web designer in fact today yesterday i was on the plane coming back from vegas like i said and this gentleman he said were you in vegas for the beauty conference and i kind of was <laughs> like really i'm a female so it's got to be the i could have been there for the construction conference you know anyway <laughs> uh, i said no i was there for a technology conference and he goes oh okay what do you do i'm like well i own a couple of businesses online he's like oh you like a web guy i swear to god Jeez. this guy said that i'm like Wow, that's so 2003. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wow. Like, uh, no, I'm not a web guy. And I think those days are over because now it really is about what they call agency work. It's not about a website. The website is an interactive process now. You know, how are you driving traffic? Is there traffic? How are you converting traffic? What are you doing in the back end? Is exactly. it's, it's no longer just our name, our location, our office hours. I mean, you can put that on Google Maps, you know what I mean? You don't have to even have a website necessarily. I think nowadays it's an interactive conversation. It's more of an agency and not a, a website. Exactly. It, it's that and it's it used to be the people just wanted sort of to get it checked off their list, yeah. have a website up there with the contact information. And now they have actual business problems that they want to solve or they want to generate leads proactively and that kind of thing. Yeah, it's, it's changed. It really has changed. I mean, like my site, Heather Havenwood, you know, I technically know how to quote unquote build a site, but I, you know, I hired out. I hired out for a couple of reasons. One, when you have someone who's third party, it's not your baby. That's the first thing. I wanted a critical eye. The other thing is I spent with him, it was a him, a couple of months of just literally sitting and talking about the color scheme. Now, you'd think, like, why? Like, I looked at different colors, you know, financial websites, blue, sites geared towards men, black and red, Playboy, mm -hmm. right? Oprah, purple. There's all these <laughs> particular sites geared towards a man, female, or baby site, light blue, pink, right? A news site, Fox News or CNN, all red or white and, or blue and white, right? There you go. I mean, you can literally go on and on and on. The colors online are critical, right? Facebook blue, LinkedIn blue, Twitter blue. Okay, so I don't want to, I don't want a blue site, <laughs> <laughs> right? So I really had to think about my colors. If you look at my colors on on heatherhaven.com, it's black and like a particular. It's not a red. It's not an orange. It's like a not a burnt orange. It's just like it's a red orange. And there's a reason okay. I did that. I literally sat down with the designer. And thought that the whole process before we built it of the color and the color scheme and the market and people were like, why would you do that? That's because I spent years throwing up crap. And then <laughs> people would go to my site and then they would have a particular view and go, oh, you're not for me. And I'm like, no, I am for you. Like, well, your site looks like it's like, you know, I didn't have this, but your site looks like it's Barbie doll because you focus on women. I'm like, what are you talking about? But, you know, people go to a website now and they make a judgment in 30 seconds. Yeah, absolutely. 30 seconds. I want to do business with them or not. They might not even talk to you. They don't even know who you are. And they go to your website, boom, they're making a decision in 30, 45 seconds. They want to work with you. It's crazy. So you have to think through everything. Do you do all your sites blue and white? Just curious. <laughs> we probably do a lot of blue sites in yeah. the uh, in the sort of industrial space. manufacturing space, but we try to vary it up. Yeah, just curious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because you think about it, Facebook is blue, LinkedIn's blue, Twitter's blue, Instagram's yeah. purple. I mean, you know. <laughs> So this is great. I really appreciate it. So I just wanted to you know, reach out. Where can people find you if they're interested in saying, hey, I want you to help me with my site or agency or any other work? Where can they find you? Yeah, absolutely. In, in terms of um, done for you services for yeah. the web design or digital marketing, it would be kasherbawebdesign.com. And if you're an agency owner or a freelancer and you're interested in growing your, your, your web design business or your digital agency, you can go to joekasherba.com on that side of things. Oh, awesome. And what do you do? How, how do you help people uh, grow their digital agency? Yeah, that's something I'm focusing more and more time on. As a, as a little kid, I had this idea that I wanted to be a teacher. And so that never happened. And, and then even after college, I thought about being a professor, but I didn't have enough degrees. So it's kind of cool that I get to do some of the teaching now. But I'm working one-on-one -on -one with people 
as well as in sort of group coaching and uh, sort of group training kind of programs. And what are you teaching these these guys? Are what do you what's the big elixir? What's the what are, what are you teaching them? It's a combination of sort of business development stuff about narrowing in on who who their ideal clients are, what market they want to focus on, getting their pricing right and everything like that. And then it's also a lot of doing advertising to to go out and get clients. All right, so marketing yourself as a as an influencer and and a solo entrepreneur. Yeah, once you have that initial piece set up, who you're going to go after, then we figure out how we're going to go after them. Awesome. Okay, great. I love it. Well, that's really awesome. So if you have a marketing agency, go check him out. Go ahead and say the website one more time. It's joekasherba.com. joekasherba.com. All right, everyone, check out Joe at his website. And I uh, just appreciate you listening today. You can check us out at The Win. My Twitter is H Havenwood. All right, guys, this is Heather Havenwood with The Win. Welcome to another edition of Heather Highlight. Here at The Win, I get to ask the experts about themselves, their stories, their views. And in this Heather Highlight, I am interviewed and probed about my story, successes and failures. So enjoy. You bet. Heather Ann Havenwood is a serial entrepreneur and is regarded as a top authority on digital marketing, sales coaching, and online publishing business strategies. Heather Ann has been named top 50 must follow women entrepreneurs for 2017 by Huffington Post. She's also author of Amazon bestseller book, Sexy Boss, How Female Entrepreneurship is Changing the Rule Book and Beating the Big Boys. And others call her an icon creator or a wizard behind the curtain. In 2006, Heather started, developed, and grew an online information marketing publishing company from ground zero to over a million dollars in less than 12 months. She's also instructed, coached, and promoted hundreds of entrepreneurs, leading them down the path to success and building a lucrative business from their knowledge and leveraging it online. Heather Ann's also a nationally syndicated radio show host of The Win, where she shares her incredible story of success and loss on the entrepreneurial journey and her true happiness in a completely compelling and vulnerable way that audiences relate to and always learn from. Well, Heather, we've got a lot in common here between you and Josh and I. How did you how did you get involved in info publishing and online marketing? Well, you know, it's an interesting story. Be the boss of your life. You're listening to The Win with Heather Havenwood. Hi, ladies. So I started a Facebook group about my personal health journey and goal to step on a fitness stage in August of 2017. Join me and my IFBB Pro health trainer as we show you behind the curtain of what it really takes to be a figure competitor and be healthy as a busy woman over 40. Go to SexyBossSlimDown.com. SexyBossSlimDown.com. Be the boss of your life. You're listening to The Win with Heather Havenwood. I think a lot of us don't like go all of a sudden when we're day, we're going to wake up and actually do information marketing. Because I was like everybody else, go to college, be a good girl, and then go work for a big company, make them money. And they give you a little bit and everything's good, right? That's kind of what I did. Uh, I worked for a big company called SBC Global here in Texas, big, big company in telecommunications years ago. And long story short, I mean, one day I got fired. I was actually number one in the country in sales. Um, I was beating 10,000 other reps uh, around the country, New York, LA, the, you know, the whole country. And um, and I was what I call beating the big boys. I was 25, didn't know anything about sales, and I was just beating everybody. And then I got my what I call pat on the head. Didn't get a Rolex, but I got a pat on the head, and congratulations, you did very good. And then I got fired a, like a week or two later. And I think that really, sp- it um, really threw me off, right? Because I thought, you know, I make you money, big company. You give me a little bit of that, and like we're good. And I didn't really know what to do after that. So long story short, that's actually how I ended up in entrepreneurship. I went to a seminar and uh, they said something along the lines of, do you want to control your life? Do you want to start a business? I'm like, yeah. You know, so long story short, I went to that seminar and I actually ended up working for that seminar company and started traveling the country, teaching people how to buy and sell houses and how to start companies, how to, how to be an entrepreneur, basically selling seminars. And then, of course, got the bug and then started consulting. And that was in 2001 and really haven't stopped. Yeah, you know, it's uh, we actually followed a very similar path there. Uh, do you see the I same did. infomercial I did? I mean, 
Because that was a good memory. Uh, no, I, I maybe <laughs> who knows, but uh, I was I was trying to make it as an entrepreneur, and uh, you know I went to a seminar, and they called me and they said you know hey we want to sell you some stuff or whatever and I said no, I thank you, uh, I don't really want to buy anything but um, I'm pretty comfortable getting on the phone and talking to people maybe you guys want to give me a job, <laughs> and they were like um. Well, I don't know. Let me think about it. And so they called me and offered me a job. And that's how I got my start. And I was able to learn and do the traveling around. Yeah. And so that's it's an amazing thing when you just when you just go in there and you ask people and you show some kind of motivation how far it can take you. That's exactly what happened. I was actually sitting in the room in the seminar. And of course, they were pitching something for $3,000, right? And I didn't have that. But then they said the magic words at the very end, like, oh, and by the way, your spouse can come for a thousand. And so I nudged the stranger next to me, total stranger, dude. And I said, can I be your spouse? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, what's your name? I'm like, yeah, I don't remember his name to say my life. So we went to the back of the room and I had my credit card, different last name, different address, everything, right? Different, didn't have a ring on. And I'm like, yeah, they, that's my spouse, you know, wink, wink. And the guys in the back of the room were like, what? A, you know, they knew, but they... They're in sales. So they're like, we'll take hey, your the money. Check still cashes, right. man. <laughs> we'll take your money. Come on, girl. And so they were noticing me. Like, who what's your deal? Yeah. What's your deal? And so right. at the and when I went to the three day event, they were kinda like, Okay, who are you? What's your story? And I kind of told them it was number one in sales. And they said, Why don't you come like travel with us in the country? Well, doing what we just what you just went through. And I was like, Yeah, yeah like that works. <laughs> so that's exactly yeah. what I did. And then you then you learn this what's going on in the industry and you learn if you're talking all day long to people about why they should start a business, it feels like, well, why don't I start a business? So that's kind of how it started for me. Yeah, that's great. And so uh, one of the uh, businesses that you started is actually the central theme of today's story, right? It is. It is. Um, so from that time of me traveling the country, I really learned the the information marketing side. You know, I was teaching people how to buy and sell houses and I was learning real estate. But there's another art of it. Like you, like you learned, there's like a call center area. There's like a whole industry behind the industry, right? So I was learning the art and science of how to create an event, how to um, promote event, how to get butts and seats, how to, when you're in the event, how to convert them. All these different things nowadays, we call those funnels and converting funnels. But back then, there's things called seminars and rooms and, and lights and all kinds of different stuff. So I was learning that art. I was teaching speakers how to close from stage. And I became, that was my consulting company. So what happened is um, I had a uh, speaker come to me and say, hey, I'm really good at this real estate stuff, but I don't know how to I want to do what you're doing. I want to like sell what I know, like sell my knowledge as we call it. Right. And I said, okay, so we partnered up 50, 50. And I like ran the whole back end. Like I built the site, did the JV, did the list building, um, all that pieces, ran the event, created the product. And his job was to do what he knew, which is teach the information. And so we built the company fairly fast from zero to a million dollars. And this is 2004 and five. And it was doing very well. Um, yeah. Okay. So, uh, it, let's, let's, yeah, let's kind of go back here. We're at the, we're at the green flag. And so everything uh, you, you had this opportunity, you kind of transitioned into it from the, the, uh, the experience that you were getting from, from working with these other people and you had a, a business partner, right? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. He came, he okay, approached so, me. So tell me, tell me about, how that relationship started and you know some of the uh some of the successes that you were having you went to a million dollars really fast uh how well was your company received let's just kind of kind of set us up for this sure so what was happening was i kind of went from employee for that one company to consultant right because i became a freelancer worked for many many different speakers and authors and 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 seminar companies back then. And then I moved from consultant to coach where I was coaching a lot of speakers. They would, you know, hire me, um, just, you know, I had many clients basically. And then this, he was a client, he was a client and I was working with him and he really realized that he, he was really good at the real estate stuff, but the whole world of information marketing was just challenging for him. He was like, I, this is a lot. Um, and we worked for a couple of months and he's like, Hey, why don't, why don't we just team up? You know, why don't you just run? I'll give you half of the company, you know, uh, be 50, 50 partners and, and let's just do this. And at the time I was like, perfect for me because I didn't want to be the front. I didn't want to be the voice of the message 
whatever the content. I didn't care what the content was. Not like I care like I didn't care less, but there's two pieces in the information market is you have the content and then you have the marketing. And that's what I was good at was the marketing aspect. And so <clears throat> I said, that makes sense to me, right? Okay. So we really had a contract and, uh, as far as like a little red flag kind of going back in my head later, he's an attorney by trade. <laughs> and that was a Heather highlight for the entire interview. Check out the link in the show notes. Thank you for listening to The Win with Heather Havenwood. Interested in coaching with Heather? Go to heatherhavenwood.com and sign up for a business discovery consultation. Here is your free gift for listening. Get three audio chapters of Heather's book, Sexy Boss, How Women Empowerment is Changing the Rulebook, when you text the word sexy to 7200. Again, text the word sexy, that is S-E-X-Y, to 7200, and receive your three audiobook chapters. Number is good only in North America. This is a Sexy Boss Wrap. This podcast is a copyright of Havenwood Worldwide, LLC.